Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to do a countdown of 15 zen slash cozy games to help soothe your anxiety and stress. Um, as a sufferer with anxiety and depression and high stress levels, I find gaming helps me no end. And I just wanted to tell you some of the games that I've played that really helped me to get through the hard days. So without further ado, let's get on with this little countdown. Okay, first up we have Disney Dreamlight Valley, which describes itself as a hybrid between a life sim and an adventure game rich with quests, exploration, engaging activities featuring Disney and Pixar friends both old and new. And the premise of the game is once an idyllic land, Dreamlight Valley was a place where Disney and Pixar characters lived in harmony until the forgetting. Night thorns grew across the land and severed the wonderful memories tied to this magical place. With nowhere else to go, the hopeless inhabitants of Dreamlight Valley retreated behind locked doors in the Dream Castle. Now it's up to you to discover the stories of this world and bring the magic back to Dreamlight Valley. So this is a game that is fun for all people, but particularly if you've got a love of Disney and Disney characters. And myself and my wife, we're obsessed with Disney. We've been a few times. Um, we constantly do Disney quizzes and you know watch Disney movies and stuff we're absolutely obsessed with the place so this is great for us and um, we love the characters and I think even if you don't like love love the characters you've still got lots to get out of this game you know it's it's part building it's part adventure it's part quest making and it's also you know you get to talk to these characters and open up new characters they'll cut it's only an early access at the moment still but they're constantly bringing out new content which is great and it's a lot of fun. It's one of those games that's tied to like the day night cycle as well. So it's kind of one of them things that, you know, you wouldn't be playing at like two, three o'clock in the morning. You could, but there's not a lot to do then and uh, that sort of time. But you're know, just going in, checking on your characters and seeing what quests are available. You get to be friends with these Disney characters and go and collect things for them. You can cook in the kitchen with Remy from Ratatouille. And you know, there's lots of other little things you can do. You can take the, the characters on quests with you to go mining and stuff for gems. You can buy stuff from from Scrooge McDuck's store. There's lots to do and it's good fun. And like I said, it looks like it's gonna be well supported. So definitely a game worth checking out if you like this sort of thing. And particularly if you've got an interest in Disney and all its amazing characters. Okay, next on this list is a little game called Power Wash Simulator. And here's what the developers say about this one. Release the pressure with Power Wash Simulator. Wash away your worries with the soothing sounds of high pressure water. Fire up your power washer and blast away every speck of dirt and grime you can find. All with the simple satisfaction of power washing to a sparkling finish. Relax, unwind in single player or play with friends in online co-op. Either way, have good clean fun. No dirt is too tough for your range of washers, nozzles, cleaners, and extensions. From casual clean freaks to players looking to get into the nitty gritty, everyone can pick up and play and feel immersed. Absorb the relaxing atmosphere and stress-free pace as you strip dirt from patios, pavements, vehicles, and public parks. Get creative and make art. Your nozzles are your brushes. The neighborhood is your canvas. Sit back, relax, and wash your worries down the drain. So the developers themselves even tell you that this is like a stress-free game it's like you know wash your worries away it's like absorb the relaxing atmosphere and stress-free pace so they're they're selling it as a game like that too and believe me I never thought I could get obsessed about a game that involved a power washer I don't even have a house I live in a flat so I'm never probably never gonna own a power washer in my life this will be the closest I get to it believe me it's fun and relaxing and currently I think I've logged over 150 hours on Steam on this game so <laughs> that tells you all you need to know really I actually completed it this weekend funnily enough the day I'm recording this video <laughs> was when I finished it and they're also bringing out a few bonus items as well you can clean Croft Manor from the Tomb Raider games um, and Midgar from Final Fantasy 7 that's two that they've released um, and that they're constantly bringing out these little extras I don't know obviously um, if there is a planned sequel or anything yet but it's not long left early access um, I think it was released I think it may have been released last year uh, the months are going very fast these days but it's certainly not been out of early access for forever and ever and it's available most formats as well i think you can even play this on game pass so there's no excuse really not to have a go of this game and it sounds maybe boring to some people to go around cleaning i mean i don't even like cleaning my bedroom and my house so you know probably it wouldn't sound like the game that would appeal to me but trust me you can lose yourself in this game for hours the sound effects are great and the clean of the dirt off of things is immensely satisfying just give it a try and believe me you'll see what i'm talking about 
Okay, next in the game that probably needs no introduction is Stardew Valley. What a game this is, absolutely immense. Been out for quite some time now, available on multiple formats. I own it on PC and I own it on Switch. <laughs> to think there for a second. Um, it's also available on Game Pass. I believe it's still available on there. It's an awesome game. Let me read you what the developers say on their website. It says, you're moving to the valley. You've inherited your grandfather's old farm plot in Stardew Valley. Armed with hand-me-down tools and a few coins, you set out to begin your new life. And it features, says, create the farm of your dreams. Turn your overgrown fields into a lively and bountiful farm. Learn to live off the land, raise animals, go fishing, tend to crops, craft items, or do it all. The choice is yours. Become part of the local community, Pelican Town, which is home to over 30 residents you can befriend. Meet someone special with 12 townsfolk to date. You may even find someone to start a family with. Explore vast, mysterious caves. Encounter dangerous monsters and valuable treasures deep underground. Customise. There are hundreds of character and home decoration options to choose from. So it may not sound like it's relaxing in some senses there really considering that there are monsters to fight but I mean that's optional if you want to go in there I mean, you will have to go in there at some point if you want um, to get money and stuff for crafting and everything but you know you can play this once you've got a farm up and running you don't really need to keep going into the caverns um, it is actually available on multiple formats it's available on steam humble store gog.com xbox one ps4 switch ios android so there you go lots of ways to play this very very special game i'm sure it doesn't need much introduction one thing i do love about it as well is it's very well supported um, on the mod scene it's really good and there is an expandable version out there on mods which uh, i heartily recommend it gives you more maps to choose from more characters and I believe that Concerned Ape, the developer, also is very much in favour of the modding of this game and supports it very well. And I think even there's a patch coming out soon, it may already be out, where it is going to be looking at the mods and everything and helping uh, to make it a bit more accessible for modding, which I think is amazing. But yeah, and this game, what more can I say? I think I've told you everything I need to in the description, really. And you start off, really, the object of the game is to make a little bit of cash first with your farming, and then you can start to make buildings on your farm for animals, and for the storing crops and everything and then you can start buying the animals and yeah you, you build your way up and uh, to eventually having an immense farm um, and you can go to the town you can do tasks for people which befriends them you can also give them gifts every day you can start making friends you can form romances you can even get married and get somebody to move into the farm with you to sort of like help you run it and stuff so it's an amazing game a very in-depth game for somebody that looks so simple but very graphically good too but you know it doesn't it doesn't boast like you know next generation graphics or anything but it doesn't need to because where it excels is in its gameplay and trust me you get it hooked on this you will lose hours of your life and if you have any semblance of anxiety or depression or stress or anything going on in your life get yourself on here do a bit of farming lose yourself look after your animals and trust me you'll not regret it Okay, next we have another game about a potentially boring subject. <laughs> it's called Unpacking, but it's far from boring. They describe it as a zen puzzle game about unpacking a life. And it's described here as Unpacking is a game about the familiar experience of pulling possessions out of boxes and fitting them into a new home. Part block fitting puzzle, part home decoration, you're invited to create a satisfying living space while learning clues about the life you're unpacking. Over the course of eight house moves, you're given the chance to experience a sense of intimacy with a character you never see and a story you're never told. And that should tell you all you need to know about this game. It really is clever the way you can play this kind of little puzzle game, like it says it's puzzle, it's part decoration, but you do get to see the story unfold just by the, the items that are being moved out of boxes and in. I'm not going to spoil anything for anyone who's never played this before. Just play it and watch the story unfold as you're doing it and you will you'll see what I'm talking about. It is very, very zen, this game, absolutely. And what I like about it is you get to see like some of the retro stuff, like you get to see a few consoles, maybe a little MP3 player and stuff, you know. It's, it, it's obviously going through eras as well as like events from somebody's life. And it's very much fun. It's not a massively long game. Um, I completed it fairly quickly. It's also available on multiple systems, Steam, Nintendo Switch, Xbox One, PlayStation. So there's plenty of ways to play this again. And yeah, it's really good. I'm not going to spoil anything like I said about the story, but just get in there, unpack a few boxes, and you'll see what I mean immediately when you start playing this game. 
Okay, next up, probably another game that needs no introduction. It's House Flipper, and House Flipper is described on Steam as a unique chance to become a one-man renovation crew, buy, repair, remodel devastated houses, and give them a second life and sell them at a profit. Now that's what you'll do eventually in this game, but you also have to do like tasks as well. People will ask you to come to their houses and redecorate and clean them up, and so if you've got all the DLC, you know you'll have to go sort the garden out and sort some pets out if you've got the animal. DLC. Uh, I haven't actually got the farm one yet, that literally came out a couple of days ago um, and as money is tight in this world at this present moment in time I don't have it. I will be getting it though because I do love House Flipper, I have every other piece of DLC and it's just a fun game and this is probably re uh, responsible for starting a whole series of games like this. I think once a game becomes popular obviously in a genre it then gets replicated doesn't it and I've got a couple of games on this list I believe, well it might only be one now because I took a few off. Uh, for space purposes but there's a few games that I own now that have definitely gone down the house flipper route shall we say but this was the original and it's good yeah really good I, I love house flipper I've played so many hours uh, probably more uh, than any other game on Steam maybe with the exception of Power Wash Simulator I've played a lot of hours of this game and it's really good fun um, I've even got it on Switch as well so there are other ways to play it I do believe it's on Game Pass and certainly has been if it's not on there now uh, so, you know, there are other ways to play it, not just on Steam and PC, which a lot of these kind of games are ideal for. But again, you can lose yourself in this game, uh, just going around and painting walls. You can, you know, if you buy your own houses in this game, you can design them any way you want. If you follow people's contracts, obviously you have to do what they ask you to do. Um, to do to complete the missions and stuff but if you're just going off on your own and just doing your own houses and you know doing that sort of stuff it's very relaxing and uh, i can't recommend house flipper highly enough it really is a fun game and you should definitely check this one out okay the next game i want to talk about is american truck simulator and also i'm lumping in euro truck simulator 2 in with this but it's made by the same people it kind of depends on your preference if you want to drive around America or you want to drive around Europe. So I've included both games at the same. We're only going to talk really about American Truck Simulator though. Just wanted you to know that the other one was available. And the description on this game it says experience the American greatest, drive the most famous American trucks and deliver various cargoes across the United States. Haul through legendary roads. American Truck Simulator will take you on a journey throughout the vast landscapes full of breathtaking and iconic landmarks of North America. Become king of the road, sit in the seat of a driver for hire who's doing jobs for the local companies. Take your first steps and set forth along the long journey establishing one of the largest transportation companies in the United States. So there we have it. it it's like a glorified like road trip simulator if you like. Okay you've got to deliver cargoes and stuff like that and sometimes it can be a bit tricky when you first start with all the buttons you've got to press and everything but once you get going on this game basically you're just driving around. You, you can look at the amazing landmarks in the game. You can drive through uh, places that you'll recognize or Obviously, if you live in America, you'll probably recognize them a lot. If you don't, obviously, you might recognize them from trips out there or, you know, from uh, as places that you actually want to go and visit. And it's lovely that way. And I say Euro Truck Simulator 2 as well also is, is a good game too. You, there's lots of add-on packs for these, so you can probably find a place you want to go visit and buy the add-on for it if you don't already i have quite a few myself already but don't have all of them on either one of the games but i do own both games and it's just lovely to get yourself lost in behind the the wheel of the truck you know maybe something you'll never do in your lifetime driving a truck so you can do it in this game and you can literally just get on the open road and put some music on if you want to you know, and just literally drive around and you know what could be more relaxing than that a lot of people do use driving as a, a great stress reliever you know a lot of people do just get in their cars and go for a drive i actually don't drive myself i never have done so again this is something that sends me out in a way because obviously i don't drive a proper car or anything so you know it's and i'm not one for driving games generally speaking there's just something about this kind of game you know really like i said glorified road trip simulator if you like but really good really nice way to just chill out if you're having a bad day and uh, highly highly recommend either one of these games like i said depending on your preferences driving around america or driving across europe okay the next game i want to talk about is planet zoo i put slash planet coaster because it kind of depends what you're more into i suppose and what you might find more relaxing some people like to build theme parks some people like to have the animal interactions because obviously that's what planet zoo is going to give you so they're both pretty interchangeable you know the systems are pretty much the same 
and obviously it's all about being creative. So I think it's best to lump these two together. My personal preference for relaxing is always Planet Zoo because I like animals, you know, I find them very relaxing. Also, there are a lot of add-on packs for both. So you might only be able to afford to buy the add-ons for one. You might not be able to afford to buy the add-ons for any, in which case you've got a lot of base game stuff too. But generally speaking, these games are very good to just cause a distraction in your brain if you are suffering with anxiety, which I think I always find is the best way to deal with anxiety. So anyway, let's see what they say about Planet Zoo. I think we'll just concentrate on that one out of the two. It says simulate runs wild. Build a world for wildlife in Planet Zoo. From the developers of Planet Coaster and Zoo Tycoon comes the ultimate zoo sim. Construct detailed habitats, manage your zoo, meet authentic living animals who think, feel, explore the world you create around them. Meet a world of incredible animals from playful lion cubs to mighty elephants. Every animal in Planet Zoo is a thinking, feeling individual with a distinctive look, personality of their own. Craft detailed habitats to bring our animals' natural environments home. Research and manage each species to allow them to thrive and help your animals raise families to pass their genes onto future generations. Now, we're talking a relaxing game here and people might say, well, Planet Zoo is a management game. It doesn't have to be. Um, my suggestion, if you are having a bad day, uh, you need something to chill out to. Put Planet Zoo in sandbox mode, turn off all the like animal deaths and everything else and the management aspects, and then just build, just build make a little enclosure, put your animals in there, you know. In sandbox mode, obviously money's unlimited, you can just build a way to your heart's content. I have very rarely played franchise mode on Planet Zoo because I find it very zen, very relaxing just to build a way myself in my own time. Under no pressure whatsoever, you don't get protesting people in the zoo, which you do get in sometimes in franchise mode. Um, you won't get animal escapes and stuff like that. You could turn all that stuff off and just have a nice relaxing experience. And it's amazing and you can just get massively creative. You can pretty much make most things that you can think of in these kind of games. The tool menus are, are absolutely amazing. We're going to come to Sims 4 later in this and that's a little bit more restrictive on what you can build. I still find it relaxing but planet zoo they kind of let you off the leash you know you can mess with the terrain you can put flowers everywhere and trees and you know there, there aren't many restrictions on where you can build you literally will get a massive plot of land and obviously you have to build within that but you could pretty much build anywhere within that which certain game other games do strict you so yep yeah, if you can think it pretty much you can build it and it's always nice to have the animals roaming around to uh, keep you calm as well I, I was going to include Jurassic World Evolution 2 in this list too, uh, by the same people, because again, you can play that in sandbox mode, and people might think, oh, well, dinosaurs, why would you want to build a park with dinosaurs? That's not relaxing, but it can be, because you can just put all herbivores in, you know, and again, you can build whatever you want to. I just think, I think Planet Zoo and Planet Coaster are a little bit more in depth than Jurassic World Evolution, but again, that's another fun one too, if you want to include that on the list too, but we're talking here about Planet Zoo, Planet Coaster, and in my opinion, very good to chill out to. Okay, the next game we're going to talk about is Animal Crossing New Horizons. This game, well, when it came out, was the game of the lockdowns in most countries and definitely the, the game of the entire pandemic, really. It was the best way to socialise for a little while, you know, when we were starved of human contact and it really came out at a time that couldn't have been more perfect and it was a revelation. Animal Crossing games have always been fun, cutesy and social and this one really took it to a new level, I, probably because of the times, a lot of it, but I think it would have stood up in its own right anyway. It's a very fun, you couldn't get more zen game. You've got chill out music all the way through the game. You've got very cutesy characters. There's nothing really outrageously dangerous unless you uh, happen to shake a tree with a, a beehive in it. <laughs> but even then, you just get a bit of a sting on your face and then you just carry on. So yes, very good game, um, very relaxing, very chillaxing. And uh, let me give you the blurb off the website. It says, escape to your island getaway, however, whenever and wherever you want. Explore your island, collect bugs, decorate your paradise throughout the day or enjoy a sunset on the beach whilst fishing in the ocean. Craft everything from tools to creature comforts as you create, customize your island community. Share your paradise, show off your island utopia to family and friends or pack your bags and visit theirs. So there you go, so that's breaking it down to what the game is all about. My wife didn't have this game when it first came out, only I did, so we would spend time, like maybe I'd let her have a go on it for a few hours and then I'd have a few hours, you know, um, and she built a house on my island and had a character in the game as well, so we were basically sharing an island. And uh, then I bought her a Switch Lite for her birthday. I bought the game for her with the Switch Lite. And then we would spend time obviously playing our own games, but then we would come and visit each other's islands, you know, and run around and, um, you know, give each other stuff. But it was so much fun, so much fun. And like, even if my, my wife was to go away, you know, for a little while, we could connect 
on Animal Crossing. You know, we could even go for a date. You know what I mean? And it's just, it's amazing. It's an amazing game that way. And I've never played it actually connecting with friends but i would imagine you could do that too i also had a, an item that i really badly wanted um, and i went onto an animal crossing community made friends with a few people that had the item and went flew over to their island and and they were happy to let me have it so it's just a very social very chill out game and and also a lot of progression to it too there's a lot of um depth to these games that you don't quite realize because they're covered in being cutesy initially they supported the game very well they don't really support it anymore but they did bring out a lot of updates including like a new coffee shop they bought out the happy home designer which is one where you can literally have a job in the day where you can make people's houses for them which is really cool Bought cooking in which again you've got to find these little recipes you can i mean originally when it first came out you couldn't grow like the vegetables and stuff which you can grow now for cooking recipes and you find crafting stuff it does all the seasons like in in the winter for example it's all covered in snow and you know you you do uh, specific season based events and, and it's just so much fun i spent so many hours on this game and it is one of those games really where you can just pick it up if you're having a bad moment and just go and do whatever you like i'm showing on the videos here that this is my island where i've built an arcade and i've built a, a american diner and i built a little boardwalk where all my shops are if you do that and you've think to yourself i want to start again i want to build a new town you could just bulldoze the whole lot and start again you can also uh, interchange your friends that are on the island your animal companions get them to move out and move new ones in if you fancy a change you know what i mean it's, it's always a bit heartbreaking when you do that but, you know it's just a very lovely and chillaxing game i would say all the animal crossing games are i played a lot of this i played a lot of new leaf which was the 3ds version but i would say moving with the times this is the better game out of all of them and i think it you know it really is something that you can sink your teeth into and when you're having a bad day just escape to that paradise island we all did it during the pandemic which let's face it was probably the worst time for everybody in the entire world at that moment i'm not going to compare it to people who went through the war and stuff because obviously that was probably a heck of a lot worse but for us in our generation this is the worst thing that we've ever known animal crossing got so many people through that so trust me it can really get you through the tough times this game give it a go okay next up we have a game that may not fit to everybody's tastes but for a zen experience i like a round of golf and i think pga tour 2k23 is the best round of golf you can play right now on any video game system or pc or whatever and uh, so let me just explain why i think that this should be on here um, i'll read a little bit from the website pga tour 2k23 features some of the pga tour's most notable courses ranges from P tpc scottsdale to riviera club and more each boasting well manicured greens fairways and bunkers right pga tour season will feature one of the many historic courses you'll find perfectly replicated in game so there we go it's just a little bit about some of the courses basically my point here is that a lot of very famous world-class golf courses that you never get to play in your life um, as a normal person are included in this game now for me a very zen experience in real life is to go and play golf obviously sometimes you don't always have the weather for that sometimes you're having a bad time when it's night time and obviously you can't have access to playing a golf course pga tour 2k23 at its heart is a game where you obviously you do compete so that can be quite strenuous quite stressful but just recently i found the great joy in turning off all the crowd sounds and the commentary, uh, commentary tracks on the, the game and just going and having a round of golf you can turn up the sound effects so literally you've got all the birds tweeting and you know the wind whistling and the water as you, if you're near the water you can hear all those noises it's nice to play it with headphones on and you just go and have a round of golf you're under no pressure no scoreboard pressure because you know there isn't any any competitive edge you're just literally playing a round of golf i think you can play this game one of two ways like i said and you could play it competing in which case obviously it gets a little bit more intense but if you just fancy to stroll around a beautiful looking golf course like by the water or whatever you know pick that kind of course turn off all the other interruptions and just go and play around the golf and sometimes there's nothing more zen than doing that it's better to do it in the real world of course but we're talking about video games here we're not talking about going out and playing a round of golf otherwise this would, the whole list will be redundant if you're not able to go and play a round of golf then this is the next best thing um, if you don't find find the competition too strenuous and i guess you could just play it normally and create a player and off you go but for me if i'm having a hard time i don't want any of that stuff just wander around a golf course play a little round of golf and 
there's nothing more zen than a round of golf sometimes and if it's going wrong then if you're hitting the ball in the water and the trees all the time sometimes it can be annoying but you have to look past that if you want a zen experience don't you and uh, golf can be that for you if you're into that sort of thing i understand not, not everybody likes sports games but for those of us that do this is probably one of the most chillaxing games Okay, it's time for the next game, and this game needs no introduction. I've put Sims 4 build mode because I think playing The Sims 4 can sometimes be a little bit stressful because you've got to keep an eye on the characters. You've got to make sure you know that they eat when they need to eat and sleep when they need to sleep and watch their tiredness levels. That can be a bit stressful, can't it? But Sims 4 build mode, however, is a very relaxing experience well for me anyway sometimes it's a bit annoying it can be a bit fiddly sometimes and um, some people actually like in the know like a lot of the, the pro sims builders say that sims 3 is better but we'll sims concentrate on sims 4 because it is the newest game and also it's now free playable so you know there really isn't you don't have to own it now to be able to play it which is good because obviously you know if you're somebody that is financially challenged and that's what's causing you stress you won't be able to afford to buy The Sims 4, you know, all, all these games. So it's nice when they are free to play games as well, because obviously then that doesn't add any financial burden to your stresses. Sims 4 build mode, yeah, it can be fiddly, like I've said. It can be restrictive, not, not like a Planet Zoo or Planet Coaster, which can be a lot more free to build on. This one does have its its little fiddly rules and it does. I mean, there's a lot of times I've actually got a little bit frustrated with The Sims 4 for that. but overall if you like building houses and hotels and like coming up with unique designs and things then yeah sims 4 is great and like i said i i don't play it at all as a life game i play it as a game for building people's houses creating the family to move into them and then sometimes maybe you might have a quick go but it's mostly just about for building the houses for me now let's see what it says on the website just quickly it says the sims 4 is the ultimate life simulation game create unique characters build dream homes and let chaos unfold Oh, and did we mention it's free? And then it says play for free. So yes, it's. it depends how you want to play it. Some people might find the life simulation part of it not stressful, you know, and they might find that the relaxing part, you know, having these people that you can look after. Some people, you know, like to, to have that and, and, and to sort of like switch off into a different life, you know, that isn't your own. And that can be very relaxing in itself, being somebody else for a little while. For me, I find the build mode the most um, relaxing part of it because I don't have to worry about somebody else's life. I just want to play a video game and switch off when I'm having a bit of a bad time. And I find that, you know, sometimes when I've got to look after characters and I've got to look after kids, you know, that, that might add a few more stresses to my list. Whereas obviously, you know, just building houses and that, it's pretty relaxing. So yeah, give Sims 4 a go if you never have, because now it's free, why not? Okay, next up we have a game along the house flipper vein. It's Hotel Renovator. It's just a fairly new game, this one, and uh, I like it. I must say, at the moment, there is an annoying bug that keeps making my game crash, so I don't know if everybody's experiencing this at the moment. The developers are working on a patch, so if you do play it, you might find that it will crash frequently which is a shame because this is a fun game and let me give you the lowdown from the website it says embark on a makeover journey you inherit an old neglected hotel from your grandfather grab your tools tear down that old wallpaper rip up the panel flooring and clean the place renew everything while uncovering the secrets of your grandfather's past express yourself and customize away modern retro cozy or even funky enjoy endless possibilities with more than 2,000 unique pieces of furniture and accessories attend to your guests needs keep your hotel tidy and aim for the five star review share your best creation show off your renovation work enjoy the no ui mode for clean screenshots find inspiration from other renovators enhance your experience and embrace endless decoration possibilities with mod support from mod.io coming later in a free update yes so this is a good go if you like house flipper you will like this it's a different environment for it and it's a different way of doing things you don't sell the places as such but you do sell out the rooms so you have to make them look good you have to keep fixing things that go wrong that is one of the things that is a challenge sometimes and, and, that, and takes you out of that stress-free environment that's if you're playing you know like the career mode on it you can just play a sandbox mode where i think you just build i haven't actually done that yet i must admit and yeah it's just a shame that they are they're in the early stages for this one i've got to make that perfectly clear so you might run across a few bugs and you know i'm sure they are working hard on it they do seem to be involved in the comments on steam quite a lot so definitely this game looks like it's going to get some support but i would say for sure if you like games along the house flipper vein there are a few out at the moment i did include arena renovation uh, on here which i 
like as well, which is all to do with uh, sports stadiums. But I thought I had to bump, I had to bump it down to 15. I had 20 originally, and that one didn't make the cut. And that's another new game. And again, it's along the same vein. So you've got a choice really between those ones, I guess. But I like the concept of Hotel Renovator. I'm just hoping that they will iron out a few of the bugs soon. So if you do like House Flipper, definitely suggest you give this one a try. Okay, so the next Zen cozy game we're going to talk about is Coral Island, another game that's in early access at the moment. If someone had to ask me to describe this game, I would basically call it Stardew Valley set on a tropical island with better graphics, because <laughs> that's basically what we're talking here. And that is not knocking the game at all, because it is a nice change of pace and stuff, and it is nice to see a new twist on the, the brilliance that is Stardew Valley. But it's essentially, you do the same things that you can do in Stardew Valley. And let me read you what it says on the website for this game. It says a reimagined farm sim game set on a tropical island that is inspired by the classics. So they even say that they're inspired by the classics, which we all know what they're talking about pretty much. Transform your overrun land into a lush and lively farm. 16 singles ready to mingle. It says sweep them off their feet and find the one. When you're ready, build a life together at the farm, perhaps even have children. Yes, no, maybe. Restore the coral reefs, clear trash, pave the way for rare fish, use kelp to hone the quality of the crops and livestock. Stop. Go deep into the cavern to mine precious gemstones, but beware, monsters lurk, rare finds, so bring a weapon or two. So again, that's a kind of a Stardew feature there, isn't there? A uh, diverse cast of characters, there are over 40 islanders living on Coral Island, coming from all walks of life. Get to know these people by conversing with them. Extra brownie points for gifts. So again, you do give gifts to people. And yes, this, it knows its roots, basically, <laughs> should we say that? It knows, it does put its own spin on a lot of stuff though, so I'm not going to turn around and criticise it and say like, you know, oh, it's ripping off Stardew Valley. It's inspired by, and that's the key factor here, but if, if there's nothing wrong with that, because Stardew Valley is an awesome game all by itself, so if you want a Stardew Valley-alike set on a tropical island uh, with very, very, very nice graphics, I mean, the graphics are awesome on this game, then you can do no wrong but to look at Coral Island. It's very fun, it's very chillaxing, it's in early access at the moment, so it is going to have some development along the way, so things will change. Um, they will add new things to it as well which is really exciting it's present moment in time i believe it's still on game pass i haven't played it on there for a while so i couldn't say for sure but it's been on game pass since day one so you can actually play this game as i always say, i always say for free but obviously you've got to have a game pass subscription but if you're already paying for that then you will get this game for free otherwise it's about 20 quid on steam so obviously look towards game pass if you have it and uh, yes, another Stardew Valley out there or Stardew Valley alike is not a bad thing at all. So, And Coral Island stands in its own right as well. So let's not go thinking it's a complete rip off. Go and check it out and see what it's all about for yourself and you'll have a great time, trust me. Okay, now we have another game where it's an activity that you could probably do in real life and get just as much zen and chill out of it. It's Garden Simulator. This uh, was only available on PC, but I think now it's getting a console release. Uh, it's definitely coming out on the Switch possibly on Xbox too. So there's plenty of ways to play this game. Once again, you know, you can't always have the weather for gardening, particularly in the autumn winter months. And if you do enjoy gardening and you do enjoy growing plants and designing gardens, you know, designing like a dream garden, then this is a really good simulator. Let me read what it says on Steam. It says plant, design, harvest. With Garden Simulator, you'll get your own allotment, place deco elements and cultivate plants to harvest and sell them get ready for a beautiful time in nature always remember a garden is a delight to the eye and a solace for the soul so there you go they're even selling it that way too this game is perfect for us in the uk where we don't get a lot of sunny weather you know so we don't get much time to go out in our own gardens and uh, this game's always good weather and you can go out there and you can do your gardening and it is very relaxing and it's another one of those games where you can design things obviously there are quite a few options here it's very nice um, very nice sound effects as well and like it suggests as well you can also sell things to make money to buy new things for your garden and stuff and uh, it's very good I really do like it um, I actually bought this for my wife because she was craving a bit of outdoor life you know we don't have a, a garden here we live in a flat and she's really wanting to get a garden and uh, she's really into that sort of thing so it's just a game as a little substitute for the time being but we found it very relaxing very, uh, sort of a game we could sort of like switch off and and just get away from it all and that's what all these games are all about you know they're just to transport you into this different relaxing little world 
you know where you can sort of like regain your stress levels lower your blood pressure and get on with your day and without a doubt garden simulator will do that for you it used to be out years ago this is a new version it's only been out probably say just over a year maybe and like i said it's coming to other consoles so you can play it there if you like a bit of gardening but you're like us you don't have a garden at the moment like because you live in a flat or maybe it's the winter and you you know you just can't get out and do your gardening this is the next best thing and trust me it does relax you maybe not as much as the real thing but it is relaxing okay next up a game that needs no introduction it's minecraft but i've put in brackets peaceful mode because minecraft in normal mode is quite stressful because <laughs> you do get a lot of creatures you get spiders you get obviously the dreaded creepers so you get a lot of things that can kill you in the original normal game and while that's most fun to play like just as a normal game if you're looking for something that's a bit more relaxing you're looking for something that's going to chill you out for a bit and get you over a bit of anxiety i would say start a game of minecraft in peaceful mode it's basically like having a lego set to play with <laughs> there's so many building blocks there's so many add-ons for minecraft as well now the latest one i think they just bought out is spongebob like bikini bottom and stuff it's amazing you can you can get star wars updates there's all sorts of things that they've added over the years on minecraft it's a very well supported amazing game and this is, there's a reason why there's a massive community of Minecraft all over like YouTube and Twitch and it never stops. It's because it's a never ending game, Minecraft. It really isn't. I mean, I, there is officially an ending, like you can kill the Ender Dragon, which I did probably about five, six years ago when I first got into this game. But I still play it. So, <laughs> so obviously the game didn't end, did it? And yes, you can just go around and build whatever your imagination will let you build. This is the original crafting slash building slash mining game that came out and, and everything else that came after that with these elements was influenced in at least some way by Minecraft. If you like a game where you basically have a giant Lego set at your disposal, then you can't go wrong with this. And if you turn it into peaceful mode, like I said, you won't get any of the nasty creepy crawlies that will come around and scare the crap out of you and eat you and God knows what else. I mean, there's zombies that come out of the water and all sorts in the, the other version, which isn't so relaxing. But yes, this game is. Let's just have a read of what it says on the website. It says, craft your path, set your sights for adventure, wander aimlessly or seek out something new in the wild update. Choices are endless and all of them yours and it's got a list of some of the other updates caves and cliffs updates for well, bigger mountains caves and biomes with increased world height a nether update welcome to the nether stronger material scarier biomes well that's something you want to stay away from i guess if you uh, want a chillaxing experience buzzy bees minecraft is buzzing discover how bees breathe life into the surroundings bring in speedier crop growth homey hives and sticky honey and village and pillage discover the most adventurous update yet defend against new threats well again you're not going to want to do that in peaceful mode build with new blocks and you've got aquatic update take a deep breath and dive into the world beneath full of marine life so again you have that option too where you can go in the water cats and pandas i mean who doesn't like cats and pandas so <laughs> yeah, there's there's so many updates to minecraft they're constantly coming and so many ways to play it i actually own it on playstation vita ps3 ps4 and switch uh, oh and pc and <laughs> pc as well so and xbox my god yes i've got it on all the, all those consoles i forgot all about that i have it on them all it's a very accessible very easy to play game just make sure you play it in peaceful mode if you want the ultimate chilling experience if you just want to play a game of it play it on survival mode and that is that is something else it's so much fun can't recommend minecraft highly enough it's not just for kids you know there's a lot out there for anybody to play and if you've got a creative brain let it loose on this game trust me you will not be disappointed and the last game on this list strange horticulture which i've only just got into recently it came out last year i believe and i'll read what it says on the nintendo website it says strange horticulture is an occult puzzle game which you play as the proprietor of a local plant store find and identify new plants pet your cat speak to a cover and join a cult use your growing collection to influence the story and unravel Undermere's dark mysteries explore the lands beyond your store to find new plants but be careful the dark woods and lakes are not always friendly to a simple herbalist you might discover powers beyond your wildest dreams or lose your mind completely use context clues to determine which places to visit and which to avoid use your trusty encyclopedia and clues found on your explorations you'll learn more about the strange plants you come across by identifying each plant, you'll be able to use their effects to influence the story from hypnotic hallucinogens to powerful poisons. Now, this game may not come across as a relaxing game, and there is a bit of murder involved, and obviously there's the exploration, which is dangerous again as well, that side of things. But essentially, it is a chilling game. It's, it's very much, again, along that kind of Stardew Valley-esque structure 
let's say it's there's no like um like farming or anything like that involved it's obviously it's more about plants and stuff but it's very good it's a very good game it is very relaxing the mechanics are relaxing when you're making your potions and things like that you have people that come in and ask you for requests you have to identify the plants and it's very hard to explain until you play it but it is fun to play and it is chillaxing. It can be a bit stressful, so this is why it's the last game on the list probably. These aren't in any particular order, but this game, I was very close to bumping it for something else, but I have found it very relaxing. And um, so I did decide to keep it on it because it's something a little bit different from all the rest. And I urge you to go spoiler free on this game. Just go out there and have a go of it and see how you find it. You know, and maybe this isn't the most relaxing game or zen game or co certainly not cozy game maybe on this list but i found it a very very good game and i did get my moments of relaxation from it so maybe you'll find that too so go unravel the mystery of strange horticulture and uh, enjoy it for what it is it really is a lot of fun so there you have it there are your 15 zen slash cozy games to soothe your anxiety and stress away i hope you've enjoyed this list again it's subjective so leave in the comments if you've got any suggestions of your own that games that work for you um, maybe even other tips on how to cope with uh, stress anxiety depression that sort of things every little tip that people can read helps so if you want to do that in the comments i have no problem at all i do like to help people through anxiety depression stress you know those sort of things because they're very close to my heart because i've suffered with them you know and people i know and care about do as well so it's always nice to learn new coping techniques so hopefully you'll find some of these games to help you but also maybe we can all come together as a community and have a little bit of discussion about this and see what works for us all as individuals because we're not all the same are we thank you so much for watching this countdown hope you've enjoyed it please check out some of my other videos if you're new to the channel please don't forget to subscribe hope you'll like the video if you did enjoy it and found it useful that would be great and i will see you on the next one as always okay my friends take care see you soon thanks a lot bye for now